Yes. 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 The same as a thief and a robber. Right. For he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. All right. Why do you have to enter by the door? Go to hold that. Hold that one. Go to Revelation three and twenty. Uh, you gotta enter by the door. All right. Yeah. What is your how which I do to you? What, what happens when you about to sup with the Lord? But he's knocking. You gotta open the door. It's the book of it's the book of Revelation chapter three verse twenty. Behold, I stand at the door. He stands at the door. Go on. And knock. He's knocking. Go on. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. And I will sup with him and he with me. So you always got to come through the door. All right? You can't break out the window and, and, and break yourself into the key. Look, man, you going off. That's trespassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try to, try to roll up in somebody's house by not going through the door, man. See if it ends well for you, man. Yeah, yeah. You get gunned down and all these turns. You don't even want to go into your own house by the window. Cause you don't want to make it look like you're breaking in your own house, man. You look real bad. You look like a villain, man. You want to be a villain? What is this, a cartoon? Uh, <laughs> to him, so like it, this is the book of John, chapter 10, verse 3. To him that the porter openeth, openeth and the sheep hear his voice, and he called his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. Right, the sheep follow him. The sheep are the Israelites. Brother, you got a minute? You got one minute for the Bible? You know your nationality? A black sheep or Israelite? What makes you say that? I mean, I know all about that. I can't hear you. You got to so I know about some of that shit. Okay. What's your name? My name is Rajiv. Rajiv? Yeah. Okay. So you believe in the Bible? Somewhat. Somewhat? Yeah. Right, we're going to show you something. Go to Deuteronomy 28. 68. All right. And this is the count is Moses. This is Moses speaking to the Israelites. I'm going to read you something real quick. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. This is Moses speaking to the Israelites. He said, y'all going to go back into Egypt again with ships. But mind you, you know, they just left out of Egypt. And there is no other account in the Bible where they went back into Egypt, you know, with ships. So it makes sense so far? Okay, read it from the top one more time. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. You're going to go back into Egypt. But to really understand what this verse is talking about, seeing that they never went back into Egypt in the in Bible, we got to break it down. we got to break down the word. All right? Like if you, you go on social media, you ever see a word you don't know? Don't you usually Google it? So that's what we're going to do right now. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So we know the word Egypt just means house of bondage. We're going to get a precept. If that's not enough, you got another precept for you. It's the book of Micah, chapter 6 and verse 4. For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. So look, this is the house of servants. That's what Egypt is. So now we have a firm understanding of what Egypt is. So with that understanding, we're going to apply it back to this verse. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. But we know Egypt means bondage or servitude or captivity, right? With what? With ships. With ships. With ships. With ships. With ships. With ships. We're going to go back to slavery or servitude or captivity again with ships. Go on. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And these Israelites never seen their homeland again. Go on. And there you shall be sold to your enemies. Your best friend. Your enemies. Your lover. Your, your enemies. enemies. Your ex. Your, your enemies. enemies. For bond men and, and bond women. 
and no, no man, man shall, shall buy you. And no man's going to redeem us out of that captivity. So rich people went on the slave boats, went to another land, and sold unto their enemies. Huh? It was the Israelites. So, you know, what, what happened to those Israelites? Who are, who are their uh, descendants today? The of the Israelites today. You said what? Over here. To be more specific, you know, yeah. Uh, African Americans. So called African Americans. Yeah. So we would be Israelites. So we're Israelites according to the Bible. Does it make sense? All praises. So, so knowing that we Israelites, we gotta keep the commandments. Because you ever been to church? I ain't been to church. You ever been at all? What did they talk about? Uh, giving thanks to Jesus, praying to him every day. Did they talk about the laws, statutes, and commandments? I, I figured. So we're going to go to Leviticus chapter 11. Just the book, book of Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, Yet he chew it not the cud. So although he's divided into the hoof and be cloven for it, he doesn't chew with the cud, meaning he doesn't probably digest his, his whole meal. Right? Therefore he's what? He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcasses shall you not touch. So it's very unclean to eat and to touch a dead pig. So that's one thing we have to abstain from. One of many things we have to abstain from. You know, we have to hate that. Right? We gotta hate eating. You know, we, we shouldn't want to be doing, be a round pork. Alright. So go to um first Corinthians three sixteen. You like pork? Huh? I eat it. Okay, that's good. You know? It was a sister over here who was telling her, you know, you gotta stop eating pork. Yeah. And she was laughing at it. You said what? Yeah. You know, but who's doing it all out of love? Same way we telling you out of love. Right, because we don't want anything bad to happen to you. Yeah, Book of First Corinthians, chapter three, verse sixteen. And it reads this: Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which it's like it which temple ye are. Let yes, right. So, look, we got to treat our temple, you know, holy. You know, we got to be wise in how we eat and consume things. All right? Oh, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. It's the book of wisdom, wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject That's unto sin. sin. So if you eat eating pork, which is a sin, wisdom's not going to dwell with you. So not only are you messing up your, your body and your temple, you know, spiritually, but you're messing it up physically as well. So that's really a big reason why you should want to abstain from pork. And really because the Lord says so. And really because, you know, when the Lord comes back, he's going to be killing people that eat, that eat pork. All right? So that's what we got to abstain from. We got to hate it. We're going to show you another law. Get any law. Deuteronomy. This is the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, verse, verse um, 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt, do not, thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. All right, so we got to keep the Sabbath, brother. You know, that means we can't buy or sell. We can't do our own pleasures. Alright? So that, you said what? We're going to show you. Your number is 1538. Beautiful question. It's the book of Leviticus chapter 15, verse 38. Speak into the children. So like, so like in Numbers 15 and 38. Speak into the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. 
throughout their generations and that they put on the fringe a border of a ribbon a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord that you may what? that ye may look, look upon, upon it and remember all the commandments, commandments of, the of the Lord so we gotta wear fringes and look upon them and remember we gotta serve the Heavenly Father right? and Heavenly Father only gave the Israelites you know this commandment right to put on borders with borders of blue and with fringes he only told us to do that so we can love him keep his commandments you know and be holy that's right so that's why we were him. so are we the first people on this earth uh, we're going to show you get uh genesis 25. that's another good question it's the book of genesis chapter 25 verse 25 and the first came out red. Verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in, are in thy womb. So you got two nations. Two different manner of people. Go on. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. And the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over and hairy garment. So like a like a hairy garment and caught and they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. So Esau is the so-called white man according to the Bible. And I wanna I want I wanna to touch on something. It describes how he looked, which is red and hairy. And which people on the face of the earth comes out red and hairy? Or generally looks red and hairy? So-called white people. So that's white people in the scriptures. We're gonna show you something else. Is that what I want? I see. It's book of Genesis chapter 32, verse 3. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Seir, the country of Edom. Right? So those Edomites, those white people, they come from the Caucasus Mountains in Mount Seir. Right. And they came out of uh um Isaac and Rebecca, right? So called black people. Isaac and Rebecca, those are our forefathers and foremothers, right? So the first white person came out of a so called black woman, Rebecca, right? So the Esau would be a. That again. Uh, Ezekiel 36 and 5. Is uh, 7 15. Ezekiel 36 verse 5. Therefore, Thus said the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia which have appointed my land into their possession. Hold on, all Idumia. That's the so called white man. You know, that's where he came from. Cliffs of the rocks. You know, damn serpent. Right. Faggot. Tyrant. <laughs> with, with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. That's how wicked Esau is, right? Here you go. Yeah. Uh, he said, I can't wait to take their land. I can't wait to take their heritage. I can't wait to oppress the so-called black man. You know, I can't wait yeah, that. I can't wait for that. That's why it's hell with the Middle East, Yeah. That's why the most have be jacking up the Middle East. Because that's the Lord. The eyes of the Lord are always upon the land of Israel, man. Right, so he see them rats over there, man. What you think you're gonna do? Jack them up. Mm -hmm. Those are rats over there. Yeah. Huh? The Palestinians and the, um, the Israelis so far is um, They go at war in the country. Mm -hmm. It's an actual war going on over there. Yeah. It was an, uh, it's kids being bombed and blown in smithereens. Yeah. You got body parts flying around like confetti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we get happy when we see that, man. We rejoice. We do backflips, man. Right. When we see Palestinians and Devils and Amalekites getting burnt the hell up and beaten down. Let me ask something. You said what? No, there's no such thing as free will. Go to Isaiah 46 and 10. Isaiah 46 and 10. There's no such thing as free will. Go to Genesis 35 and 5, 45 and 5. That's the Christian church. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. So the Most High declared the end from the beginning. Meaning he knew it was going to happen from the way, 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 way back from the end. All the way in the beginning. So if he knew that, that means he knew this person's lot and this person's lot and that person's lot. 
And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my, my what shall stand? My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. He's going to do all his pleasure. Right, man, you know, he has complete authority, authority just over everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genesis 45 and 5. Precept. Oh, no, more precept. precept. Book of Genesis at the 45 verse 5. Genesis Selection. chapter 45 verse 5, an account with one of my favorite accounts in the Bible. And it reads this. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves. Go up one verse. Verse 4. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. Preserve life. So the Most High set that up from the beginning. That was predestined, right? Because when Joseph didn't know what was going on. You know, he just, I'm in jail. Damn, that's messed up. But the Most High knew everything was going on because he predestined it from the beginning. So... That was all uh, the opposite of free will. Another precept on that is Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 1. The king's heart, meaning your mind, is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it with us however he will. So the most high is in control of even the kings, the top people on this earth. Right? If, if Donald Trump say, look, build this wall over there in Arizona, they're going to build it. Right? Why? Because the most high told him to do that. Most I put in his spirit to do so. Most I got the authority. Go to Job 34. Proverbs 16:33. This is the book of This the book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 33. The lot is is cast into the left. All right. But the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. All right, me now. Oh, it's all from the Lord at the end of the day, right? Um, Rolling dice, you know. Or uh, let me give a better example. Uh, a man that pulls a short stick, right? It wasn't him that really did it. The most I made him pull that short stick. Right? That was his life, right. giving him from the Lord. Right. Lord. It, the Lord, you know, told him what he's going, or you know, put in his mind what he's going to do, and all of that. Uh, Khan, Khan, everything is of Yahweh by Hashem Mashiach Yahweh That's right. Daniel twelve and thirteen. The, the Lord told Daniel to stand in his lot. Right. And the scriptures also say man's goings are of the Lord. Proverbs sixteen and nine say the Lord direct of man's steps. So ain't no free will. Christianity will teach you that the Lord don't got everything under control down here, man. The Lord controlling everything, man. Right. Your every thought process. Right. You waking up in the morning. You going about your day to day. The Lord controls it. So let's get the precept to that. Yeah. Book of Job, chapter 33, verse 14. Bring it out. For God speaketh once, yea, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not in a dream, in a vision of the night when sleep. Deep sleep falleth upon men. So when you knocked out, you know, you counter sheep, go on. And slumberings upon the bed. Then he's opened up the ears of men and served their instruction. Meaning, at night, when you go to sleep tonight, the most high is going to open up your spirit. You know, he's going to place what, the, uh, what you're going to do the next day. So, you know, kind of like a robot, for lack of better terms. If I program a robot to do this, that, and the third, and he does it, you know, that's not, you know, free will of him doing it. You know, I put in his in his spirit to do so. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So it's saying man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man understand his, uh, his own way? So there's no such thing as free will. Okay. Got, got precept. Uh, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 40. In verse 15, going back to the dreams and visions, and it reads thus, Sirach 40, and um, okay, Sirach chapter 40 and verse 5, wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife, and in the time of rest upon his bed, his night's sleep do change his knowledge, right, so everything's come from Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, whether it be wrath, Envy, trouble, unquietness, fear of death, anger, and strife. Verse 6. A little or nothing is his rest, and afterward he is in sleep, as in the day of keeping watch. Trouble in the vision of his heart, as if, as if he were escaped out of a battle. 
When all is safe, he awaketh and marveleth that the fear was nothing. I got to appreciate it. Con, uh, this is book of Isaiah. Uh -oh. Chapter 45, showing you that the Most High controls dreams, visions, night sleep, and everything. So this is Sirach chapter 45 and verse 7. More on that. I started 6. Isaiah 45 and 6. Salakia, the water. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So the Most High does everything. Whether you have a good day or a bad day, it's all of the Heavenly Father. Now you can bring out yours. Just like the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. Because it was a big uh, shipwreck going on. The sea was going, it was crazy. And cried every man unto his God and cast forth the, the words that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. Man was knocked out. All hell breaking loose and he's sleeping. Go on. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise. What are you doing? What are you doing? Wake up, bro. You know? Arise, or come by thy God, if so be that God would think upon us that we should perish not. And then they said everyone to his fellow, Come. Let us cast lots. Cast what? Cast, cast lots. That we may know what whose cause this evil is upon, upon us. Uh -huh. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. So, like a better term, you know, he got the he pulled the short stick. Right. Now the most high made him go through all of that. Just so he could go through, you know, the things he had to go through in the following chapters. So the whole point is the most high is in control of everything. Even the lots is being cast. Alright. Man that won a lottery, the most I made that man win a lottery. So they can't say, oh that was luck that was all me, it was because I wore my lucky sandals. Baby that. Yeah. This the book of Sirach, chapter 18, verse 1. He that liveth forever create all things in general. The Lord only is righteous, and there is none other but he. He governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will. That's right. Go on. For like you for he is the king of all by his power dividing holy things among them from the profane right that's what we went to see that one day you know he got the whole world in his hands yeah. got the whole world <laughs> in his and hands fight, yeah i remember yeah, we brought that out that was the spirit huh uh, man's going to the lord yep so yep yep there's no such thing as real will in the bible you know, it's precept upon precept, and we're doing that because, you know, that's the way to get understanding, you know. In the churches, they don't really do that. They don't do it at all. <laughs> you got any more questions, comments, concerns? You got the YouTube channel? Somebody give me YouTube? Okay, all praises. Yep, you will be an Israelite. Go to Acts 319. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 Repent ye therefore and be converted You hear that brother? That your sins may be blotted out When the times of refreshing Shall come from the presence of the Lord so We gotta repent to the Heavenly Father For all the sins that we've committed Today and all the You know yesterday And all the things that she did in the past That she didn't really know about You know Yeah you might have uh, committed a sin yesterday night You gotta repent from that Or yesterday year yeah, that's the thing too. So you know the, the stuff that she did, you know, years ago. You gotta, you know, ask Heavenly Father for forgiveness for the things that she did. The, the stuff that you might do in the future, ask the Lord to forgive you for. You know, Lord have mercy. You know. Do you have any more questions, comments, concerns? You know, we. Uh, go 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 to step right three. Twenty one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're gonna bring out the verse real quick. I, I know. What do you say? He says he asked him to earth for sweat. What is the right answer? It depends on what you ask. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 3, verse 21. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. So, you know, you can access personally, but you know, 
when we go out and teach, we gotta tell people, you know, you can't reach out, you can't, you know, it's limits to things, right? It's not really expedient right now to try to figure it out, you know, and not wrong with asking it, but you know, when we are teaching, you know, we gotta let our people know the expedient things first, which is keeping the commandments. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, you know. Yeah. I don't understand. You know. That's the thing, you know, every brother, they, they want to think about it, you know, differently. And, you know, this is here and there. Here yeah, it's neither down. here nor there. Some brothers think it's flat, some brothers don't. But it's not necessary for your salvation, bro. It's not expedient. It's really the yeah, Me personally, really. I don't think it's flat, but you got brothers that think it's flat. Bro. I mean, yeah, it's bro. the Lord not going to destroy us for, you know, thinking something like that. Yeah, you know. It's unprofitable. Hey, I just had to know that. I feel you. Yeah. All praises. All praises. Praise. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't remember asking yeah. questions. Yeah. All right, go. Yeah, the article stuff is all hollow. Yeah, it's up in there. So you can ask through 19, bro, for sure. Ask through 19, you're about to close out. Ask through 19. Look at X, chapter 3, verse 19. So like you, repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Brother, you got a minute? Yeah, I got a minute. All right, so, you know, what's your name? Swipe. Swipe. Like Swiper? Swipe go, huh? Swipe go. Swipe go. Swipe go. Swipe go. Swipe go. You believe in the Bible? Yeah, of course. Are you I sure? Believe, I'm dead if I ain't believe in God. Well, if you believe in God, you wouldn't be smoking right now. Right. Oh, let me say something about the oh, drink. It's deep. Oh, see? That's a sword, but that, that's, that's, that's Hebrews 4 and 13 and Jacob's. All right, yep, yep, yep. That was it. All right. All right. All right. All right. You got to let the scriptures come yeah. out. Yeah. All right, man. All right, bro. You got to oh. You got to repent. Hey, you got to repent. Yeah, what? Lord, that's what you're saying. I repent for my sins every night, sir. What's sin? Sin. We're going to show you. We're going to show you what sin Can't is. Can't answer the, the question. Oh. <laughs> We're going to show you in the Bible. No ban the street, nigga. Yeah, you First job. This is the book the, the so, so like, hold on. The so-called white man is happy when you say that. Uh -huh. The so-called white man, he... he He's really happy when you call yourself a streeter. See, I know all about systematic self-oppression, systematic oppression. I know all about that. Oh, I'm sorry. The white man, the white man set up different beliefs and stuff for people to be set up to fail in life. It's called the William Lynch Law. It's 415 years old. I'm very familiar. And you also put smoking in that thing. Nah. I mean, everybody got their own habits. You know what I'm saying? Somebody gotta find that. You gotta do the wrong. Sometimes you do wrong to be right. Yeah, this is the book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So once you sin, you transgress in the law, brother. Well, with that being said, you know. We're gonna close out. Hey, hey, hey brother, no putting the branch to your nose, man. That's what that means. When you get high, that means you're putting the branch to your nose. So you know. You got a spirit on them, man. Dug out in deep in the deep. Sister, you know your nationality? Brother, you know your nationality? Uh oh. I know. Sister, you know your nationality? You're an Israelite. Go to the next cell. Alright, I just want you to know, look, you gotta use that. Come on, bring that up. Oh, God. Say low, no, slow. Hey, you gotta go to the next Oh, that's going on. It's on the Bible, man. I'm confounded. Hey, look, man, it's the feast day, brother. Smart. That's Satan. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 
8 verse 17. This for you gangsters. Then he said unto me, has Slocky, so has thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? Read on. For they have filled the land with violence and have provoked me to anger. You filled the land with violence with, with that third thought mentality, man. Shooting up your brother. Read on. And lo, they have put the brats to their nose. They did what? They put the brats to their nose. They put the brats to their nose, man. They roll up that dope and smoke it. That's what that means to put the branch to your nose. So Israel been wicked, man. You had you had Judahites in the Holy Land, man, during that time on the head of every street. Gangsters, man. You had gangsters back then. But the Lord going to destroy you gangsters, man. Hey, we were talking about that earlier. You know, you had Jake selling drugs back then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, let, let's meet up in Damascus. Yep. You give me 30 pounds of opiates, and I give you 50 shekels of gold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. they was doing, you know, gang stuff, gang related stuff. <laughs> that American, that old American gangster spirit, right? <laughs> hey, hey, Jake was pimping, man. That's why the Lord said, don't prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. Right? So Jake was pimping back then, and that's going to hell off, man. So with that thugged out gangster mentality, you're going to end up in the prison system, man. Ain't, Got it. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Let me tell you what that too goes. Jake swear he a goon, he a gangster, but real gangster shit is what these Rothschilds is doing. That's real gangster. Rothschilds, Rockefellers, DuPonts. That's real gangster. We, we, the stuff that we, you know, we used to do before we came to this truth was not gangster or goonish at all. It's just... Just ignorant. Con, con. The real goons, the real gangsters is the Rothschilds. That's the real goons, the gangsters. Jake, Jake, you're not a gangster because you sell a dime bag and a nickel. Right? That's 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 lightweight to Esau, man. That makes you a damn fool. Chunk change. You think you're gonna compete with Esau? Right. Man, you ain't nothing. That's what he go to uh that's what that's what Esau go to war for. He invade Iraq to control the drugs and all the boats and all the planes. Yeah, yeah, God. Right. That's a gangster, we got man. some real gangsters right there. They sit around that round table with them fat right. cats. They're going to war for it. <laughs> you right. We got the big old belly and the top hats with a cigar in their hand. Right, and being a gangster is, is going to land you in prison. Look at Takashi 69, man. Now he's singing like a damn hummingbird. Right? Cause he wasn't a gangster, man. And Jake, you ain't no gangster, man. That's not in your. That's not in your. That's not in your spirit to be a gangster. It's not in your spirit to be tough. It's in your spirit to be a warrior for your high was shot, but you don't want to be that way, man. That's why when uh, Esau come and get you and uh, interrogate you, you start singing, man. Esau get up all up in your mind and put, uh, 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 um, uh, intimidate you with his words, cause you're not living that life, Jake. You shouldn't live that life as an Israelite. And with that, we're going to give call. Hello, Yummy. How about you? Now we shot.